Our first guest tonight is an Emmy Award-winning actor you know from films such as The Trial of the Chicago 7 and Armageddon Time, as well as the critically acclaimed hit series Succession. He's currently starring in An Enemy of the People, which is playing now at the Circle in the Square Theater on Broadway. Please welcome to the show Jeremy Strong, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. There's been a lot written about your sort of sartorial choices, that you almost always wear just brown, sort of uh, monochromatically brown outfits. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's a, it's a monstrous lie. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real thumb in the eye of the press right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a subversive. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm really just trying to think of what to call the Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's Thanks. hard, Thanks. right? It's a hard thing to come up with a name yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. If it, if, it, if, it, if it comes to you at any point uh, during the interview, okay. feel free to break out. Thank to, you. Because I do feel like Fred needs that. Hey, I want to say something. Uh, I also noticed something. I was holding this up. You obviously decided to grow a mustache after you took the photo for the, the playbill here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the mustache is great. Thank you. Yeah. But did you, uh, were you sort of, did you realize after the photo, you're like, this guy needs a mustache? I just, uh, you know, doing live theater is, uh, it's a bit like emotionally free climbing El Capitan uh, eight times a week. And I thought, why not do that with a giant mustache? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you feel like, I don't feel like you don't see enough rock climbers with just the mustache. So. No, exactly. <laughs> this has been a long time. We're talking backstage, 10 years since you've uh, done a run of a, yeah, of a, a show. Yeah, a little over 10 years. Yeah. Uh, do you find it thrilling being back on stage? Yeah, it's all the things. It's exhilarating. It's terrifying. Uh, theater has a danger to it, but but also there's something about being uh, there with the community every night, uh, the electricity and the exchange of that that is just really, um, yeah, it's thrilling. It's a privilege to do this play. It's a, I was a privilege to see it. I saw it last Thursday. It's in the round. We're all very close to the performers. And I know this might sound funny coming for me because I get to sit with people I respect every night very closely. It's so exciting to watch actors you respect act up close. Like that for me was this sort of palpable excitement of, oh my God, look, I'm gonna see Michael Imperioli and Jeremy Strong like do their thing and I get to be so close. And you guys take it to another level, which is sort of there's this, this brief break, not a full intermission, but we come back, sort of audience members are sort of sitting on stage and uh, you know, you obviously uh, know that's gonna happen. I didn't, so I was like, oh they gotta get them off there. Do you, do you feed off that energy of who you have on any given night? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, um, it's a play that, that uh, Ibsen, Norwegian playwright, wrote in 1882. And, uh, but it, but it, but, and we talked about this, but it, it really speaks to now. It's, um, it's about a scientist in this small town who discovers that the source of the town's economy and tourism is, uh, it, which in this case is the baths of, of the town, is sort of their main attraction, is poisoned. And it's about someone who's trying to wake up the people uh, to this imminent catastrophe. Um, and so there's a scene in the play that is a sort of uh, town hall-esque meeting. And the director, in, in a really brilliant and deft way, I think, opened the play up to, to audiences, circling the squares in the round, and. And uh, so, so, yeah, we get to have a sort of um, conversation with the audience every night. And the conversation is really about now. The play is an allegory about so many things. You and know. it's also, you know, obviously, you know, it's about environmentalism, which gives us yeah. this very uh, present feeling. And you mentioned this conversation with the audience, but of course, most nights the conversation is only one-sided, right? The audience doesn't talk back. But you did have a moment where there were protesters in the audience. Yeah, we had... Um, Extinction Rebellion uh, uh, come on, on a night uh, when all the critics were there. And listen, it was, um, when you're up there, you're kind of walking a razor's edge of attention. So you don't really want to be thrown off of that. Um, and at the same time, this is a play about trying to communicate an inconvenient truth to the power structure. And I guess it says something about our inattention that these activists feel a need and feel compelled to 
this I, I didn't want it to happen, you know, on, on my stage. But at the same time, um, you know, you have kids, I have kids. I sure. feel very, this play is about, I, I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't, uh, in a way, support what they were saying. It only underlined the message of the play, which is that we're all in this together and we're all in deep I mean, yeah. it's like record wildfires, record heat, record floods, uh, unprecedented extreme weather events. And then I think the scarier stuff is the more insidious, these slow onset events. I read this week that these ice shelves in Greenland, 30 million tons the size of the Eiffel Tower are melting every hour. So it's so these things are happening and they're happening on our watch. And, you know, the IPCC said it's a code red for humanity. So I'm doing this play, but I also think if we could be a force multiplier for saying something about the world we all live in, then I'm all for that. It's a really, you can't believe. While you're watching, you can't believe the play was written. No, it's in, crazy. In 1882. I agree. And uh, you, this is uh, such a cool theater. I've been lucky enough to see a few things at Circle in the Square. Had you seen anything when you were when you were younger uh, yeah. actor? Did yeah. You get to see stuff there. I've seen a bunch of plays there, um, but the one and it was really a seminal event in my life. I saw Phil Hoffman. Yeah. Do True West there. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't. I... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley did this production of Sam Shepard's play True West uh, in. 2000, I think, and he was one of my heroes, and there was no more courageous actor than him. And so I, I remember sitting in the back row. I went four times. I was in college, and just sort of having, making a bit of a wish and a prayer that one day I might get to do something like this. So it's very meaningful to me to be at this theater right now. Well, it's a really special play. I have some more questions for you. We'll be right back with Jeremy after this. <laughs> 